All right, so welcome to the um, Miracle Prayer Meditation. I'm really happy that you're here and that you joined and decided to join tonight or today or tomorrow morning, this morning, however the time is for you. I'm really happy to see you. And um, so today it's actually the start of a 40 day um, activities that we're going to do and see the doing is always a bit um, different than you are accustomed to in say in the human world because this is a matter of being present participating only sh like showing up is is the requirement the rest is all taken care of so you have possibilities of uh, you have possibilities of entering into um, communication together you know and that's that's why we're here you want to have that in full awareness and that is so um, such a great opportunity here t when we meet. So that's that's lovely. So welcome everyone. Really happy that you're here. So relax. We're, this is a meditation, prayer meditation meeting, and it's um, relaxation is really number one in all of this. So there's not much being asked of you, but to be present and willing to open up to what has been given. And today I'm reading, because this is in the 40 days to the second coming of Christ, and this is the, a description that I would love to share with you. It is a beautiful vision um, coming directly from Christ's mind. And so the prayers that I will use after that, there are two prayers that I'm going to use, um, are also uh, really beautiful. So yeah please uh, please join me in that and um, see uh, how much you can open up for it you know it's really like opening up relax don't forget to breathe and um, relax relax your shoulders relax your see that all the things that happened before are gone they're over you don't have to be occupied with it in this next coming hour. So it's good to know that we have the meditation and afterwards there will be like a Vespers is what I called it. It's like playing music, staying in this light frequency together, joining, but then having the music support us in that and um, see this as a great joining a celebration basically that we're doing so you're invited to stay and if you feel like going before that's fine too of course you're completely free to do that of course so here we are in this um, i'm going to read the what is the second coming from the word text the word text of a course in miracles and this is just so incredible to have in front of you say as a vision that's that's why I share it with you. Like I love to read it. Okay, so here we go. What is the second coming? Christ's second coming, which is as sure as God, is merely the correction of mistakes and the return to sanity. It is a part of the condition which restores the never lost and re-establishes what is forever and forever true. It is the invitation to God's word to take illusion's place. The willingness, you, you have the word, the willingness to let forgiveness rest upon all things without exception and without reserve. It is the all-inclusive nature of Christ's second coming that permits it to embrace the world and to hold you safe within its gentle advent, which encompasses all living things with you. There is no end to the release the second coming brings, and as God's creation must be limitless. Forgiveness lights the second coming's way because it shines on everyone, as one. The second coming ends the lesson which the Holy Spirit teaches, making way for the last judgment, in which learning ends in one last summary 
that will extend beyond itself and reaching up to God. The second coming is the time in which all minds are given to the hands of Christ to be returned to spirit in the name of true creation and the will of God. The second coming is the one event in time which time itself cannot affect. For everyone who ever came to die or yet will come or who is present now is equally released from what he made. In this equality is Christ restored as one identity in which all sons of God acknowledge that they are all one. And God the Father smiles upon his Son, his one creation and his only joy. Pray that this second coming will, will be soon, but do not rest with that. It needs your eyes, your ears, and hands, and feet. It needs your voice. And most of all, it needs your willingness. Let us rejoice that we can do God's will and join together in its holy light. Behold, the Son of God is one in us and we can reach our Father's love through Him. So here's the lesson that we're going to, or the prayer that we're going to read as for as the meditation. So I'll repeat that during the meditation a couple of times. And God himself shall wipe away all tears. Father, unless I judge, I cannot weep, nor can I suffer pain or feel I am abandoned and unneeded in the world. This is my home because I judge it not, and therefore it is only what you will. Let me today behold in uncondemned, through happy eyes, forgiveness has released from all distortion. Let me see your world instead of mine, and all the tears I shed will be forgotten for their source is gone. Father, I will not judge your world today. God's world is happy. Those who look on it can only add their joy to it and bless it as a cause of further joy in them. We wept because we did not understand, but we have learned the world we saw was false and we will look upon God's world today. And God himself shall wipe away all tears.
So here's another prayer. Where darkness was, I look upon the light. Father, our eyes are opening at last. Your holy world awaits us as your sight is finally restored and we can see. We thought we suffered, but we had forgot the Son whom you created. Now we see that darkness is our own imagining, and light is where is there for look <laughs> light is there for us to look upon. Christ's vision changes darkness into light, for fear must disappear when love has come. Let me forgive your holy world today that I may look upon its holiness and understand it but reflects my own. Our love awaits us as we go to him and walk beside us, showing us the way. He fails in nothing. He, the end we seek, and he, the means by which we come to him. Where darkness was, I look upon the light. Where in darkness was, I look upon the light. Father, our eyes are opening at last. Your holy world awaits us. As our sight is finally restored and we can see. We thought we suffered and we had forgot the Son whom you created. 
Now we see that darkness is our own imagining, and light is there for us to look upon. Christ's vision changes darkness into light, for fear must disappear when love has come. Let me forgive your holy world today, that I may look upon its holiness and understand it but reflects my own. Where darkness was, I look upon the light. Where darkness was, I look upon the light. Father, our eyes are opening at last. Your holy world awaits us. As our sight is finally restored, we can see. We thought we suffered, but we had forgot the Son whom you created. Now we see that darkness is our own imagining, and light is there for us to look upon. Christ's vision changes darkness into light, for fear must disappear when love has come. Let me forgive your holy world today that I may look upon its holiness and understand it but reflects my own. Our love awaits us as we go to him and walk beside us, showing us the way. He fails in nothing. He, the end we seek, and He, the means by which we come to Him. Where darkness was, I look upon the light.
All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, being part of this meditation. And so we're continuing now with the with the vespers. So there will be some music, and you can still say stay in the light that you are experiencing and the quiet that you found. So wherever you are, you can do that by yourself or you can do listen to the music that I play. It's all very quiet and just very meditative. And it's a beautiful opportunity to uh, to deeply connect. You know, so it's like, yeah, just sink right in it. So <laughs> it's really like that. So enjoy that. Um... Mm -hmm. 